paper, and I'm really looking forward to talking with you and getting your insight on Vietnam particularly and other matters, but I'm really happy to welcome you to the program. Well, it's I'm very honor. glad to be here with you. It's an honor. And I'm really looking forward to this, and welcome to Conversations, where it's a pleasure to welcome to the program a man that I think probably needs no introduction to the viewing audience of Conversations, that's Seymour Topping. He has an illustrious career uh, path that, that continues, and we're going to be talking about that. And uh, he has, uh, he was managing editor of the New York Times. Uh, uh, he's had a very interesting life. He has a new book out, if you don't mind. Let me show them right at the outset what it looks like. And do you want to read the title for me, Mr. Topping, please? Oh, well, thanks. Uh -huh. Title Crossroads, a novel of Vietnam, 1945. 1945. Yeah. And uh, this is a book that uh, we're going to want to talk about, among other things. But welcome very, very much to Conversation in the Manhattan Neighborhood. It's an honor to welcome you to the well, program. Well, thank you. I'm very glad to be here. wonder if you could please share uh, your own background, where you were born and raised, and that sort of thing. We could talk about your, you know, your background, and then from there we could talk about uh, your book, Vietnam, current state of affairs, and uh, if you would, please. Well, I was, uh, I was born in Manhattan mm -hmm. uh, and um, raised in, uh, in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And the family moved from Manhattan to the Bronx, to the Queens. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was during that period of time, those uh, early years in grammar school, high yeah. school, yeah. when I decided I wanted to uh, be a journalist. You'd Matter of fact, uh, I think when I was eight years old, mm. I, I wanted to be a journalist. And Good for when you. I, when I was 12, I was the editor of my Boy Scout newspaper. All right. Good start. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was 16, I was the editor of my high school newspaper. Which high school did you go to? I went to the Atlanta Childs High School uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, in, the, in the Bronx. Uh -huh. uh, and, um, and then I went off um, to school at the University of uh, Missouri because Missouri has a very good school of journalism. They do, don't they? Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, it was, the, as a matter of fact, it mm -hmm. was the first school of journalism in the United States. Is that a fact? I didn't yes. realize. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and um, and also, I went to the school of journalism because I wanted to be a correspondent in China. Okay. And Missouri had special connections with 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 China. Is that interesting? Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, Dean Williams, one mm -hmm. of the famous deans of the school, established schools of journalism mm -hmm. in China at St. John's in Shanghai and at Yanqing up, up there in, uh, in Beijing, mm -hmm. which in those days was called uh, Peking. Uh, Peking. Peking duck. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> uh, I've had a lot of Peking ducks. Yeah, I over imagine the you have, on, yeah. On many trips to China. Yeah. And there's some good uh, restaurants here in uh, Right here in, in New York. We have one right at the corner where we live. They got the ducks hanging in the window. It's really yeah. kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It's great food, Chinese food. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Uh, so um, uh, then, um, uh, after um, I w just a few months before I was to graduate from uh, the University of Missouri, mm -hmm. uh, I was called up uh, with my ROTC class. It was the war. Mm. 1943. 43, okay. And that's right. right. I went to officer training school. Mm -hmm. I became an infantry officer. I went out in the Pacific. Uh, I wound up in the Philippines. Uh, and then I launched myself uh, on my journalistic career. Did you see action in the service? Uh, not, uh, not really. I uh -huh. came into Leyte just as the, uh -huh. the war was, uh, w was really was ending. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, so I didn't see very much in the way of action. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, I took my terminal leave yeah. uh, from um, uh, from the Philippines. I, d I didn't go home, mm -hmm. and I got myself uh, a part-time job uh, working in uh, in China. Wow, in, that was in, a big in, jump. In Peking. Yeah, right. I had the great title of uh, as, as uh, chief correspondent of North China and Manchuria, covering the Chinese Civil War, mm -hmm. and my salary was fifty dollars a month. What'd you do with all that <laughs> money? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I stayed alive um, among yeah. other things. Until good, I got that's a, a good uh, beginning. Yeah, 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 until I got a staff job uh -huh. uh, with my savings during the years in the army. Uh huh. Uh huh. Three and a half years in the but army. You were in China. You had an interest in China and the East at that early time. Uh, yeah, that's right. I uh -huh. always wanted to. Uh, from um, my teens to go to China. Any idea where that came from? Was it from the family or from well, your general I think, reading uh, or what? No, if, uh, uh, really from reading uh -huh. books like uh, Edgar uh -huh. Snow. Oh uh, yes, right. Uh, Red China uh -huh. over uh, uh, Red Star. I think. Red Star over yeah. China uh -huh. and uh, uh, books of that kind. Um, and 
and reading the newspapers, and uh, became uh, engrossed with, uh, with, uh, with China. Well, it's a subject that suits you well because it's a very interesting subject that's informing our whole the whole era we're living in now. Yes, with that's things right. that are developing recently, and so forth. And you were there in China, and I know it's interesting. I've read some of the things. I was at a seminar you were at the other night, and you were in China, and then e e e and you were also very early assigned almost as an afterthought or something and we want to get to that because a good deal with your book to Vietnam Saigon if I'm not mistaken and at the time it was about 1950 you were assigned there well and if I may no. it seems to me I read in a piece you had written that at the time 1950 Saigon there were about 12 Americans in the whole of the country yeah only about a dozen so you were uh, in Americans. on the ground and no, floor and no, and no reporters yeah no reporters no, at all no reporters. those were just business guys or something huh? well what happened mm -hmm. was that I covered the China Civil War for three years yeah uh, Nanking and, and, uh, and then uh, uh, I was waiting in Hong Kong uh, to go back and open the Associated Press Bureau by that time I was working for the AP mm -hmm. uh, in uh, in Peking excuse me a minute you were in Peking when? What year? Um, well, uh, I spent um, the first uh, six months, uh, my first six months, based in, in, in Peking. But what year was that? I'm uh, and we're talking now about 1946. 46 before Mao? No, no. no? Uh, Mao was at that time uh, off in the yeah. hills. Yeah, during the long march. Uh, that's and all right. That. Yeah. Leon, as a matter of fact. But I mean, you were on the ground floor. I that's mean, you right. were there where there was no one there hardly at all. I um, mean, that's what I'm getting at in a certain sense, in terms of not only China, but Asia. That's know? right. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I was based in, uh, in, in Peking, uh -huh. now Beijing, for six mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. uh, then I got a staff job and uh, more money. <laughs> yeah, good. Well, they more than and, 50. And uh, huh? yeah. I was based on, then in Nanjing, Chiang Kai-shek's capital. Yeah for the next two and a half years until uh, the communists took the city. Have you ever had a chance to read Iris Chang's book, The Rape of Nanking? Uh, yes, I certainly have. I'm uh, sorry, I'm really sorry. Uh, I was in close touch with her and she's just passed, you know, recently. Yeah, it's sad. Under tragic circumstances. Tragic. Uh, yeah. But she wrote so well on that and also the Chinese in America and so forth. But there was this, uh, and there's still the ramifications of the Japanese treatment, the massacre of Nanking, that's still part of the dialectic or the of the context within Absolutely. which things in East Europe, uh, East Asia, are transpiring. Very much, and yeah. you know the recent riots in in, in China, yes. anti-Japanese uh, riots, uh, because uh, a lot of Chinese fe feel that the the Japanese uh, ha have not apologized uh, for for the uh, rape the of Nanking, for that and other atrocities yes, up right. in, uh, in Manchuria, Manchuria and elsewhere, yeah. yes, Shanghai. Right. But you were right on the spot then in that. It must have been, in a certain sense, you were younger and everything. It must have been very exciting to be there at the time and uh, it, with so little reporting company around and that sort of thing. It gives you a unique, a unique personal understanding and perspective on that very crucial time and that very crucial part of the world. Well, during the, the Civil War with the American mm -hmm. involvement, uh, there, were, there was a lot of tension mm -hmm. focused on China and there were uh, a lot of correspondence around uh, mm -hmm. Uh, when I, I really got into uh, an area where there were no correspondents around and was little known to the United States was when I went to Vietnam mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I was waiting um, in Hong Kong to, uh, uh, I, I'd left China uh, after the communists took the mainland. Mm -hmm. I was waiting to go back uh, into uh, Peking to open the AP Bureau mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when Mao didn't let American reporters in, uh, I got a cable mm -hmm. from uh, from the AP uh, saying uh, something seems to be going on down in Saigon, Indonesia. I said, Saigon, Indonesia, what <laughs> is this? Indonesia, yeah. uh, and of course, it might have been a typo, but right. it was also Indo indicative. China. Yeah, but it's also indicative. Yeah, of right. How, of how the extent? That yeah, that it was just people a side. Were, yeah. were com confusing what what is Indochina yeah. and what is Vietnam. Yes. And so my wife and I took off um, uh, for. Uh, for Saigon, uh, supposedly to spend uh, uh, a month. And as a matter of fact, we were still on our honeymoon. No, I'll be darned. What uh, a way to they, spend uh, honeymoon. Saigon in 1950. Yeah, I'd, what a thing. I'd, yeah. met, um, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd, I'd met my wife in, yes. in Nanking. And she's a, a, f a photojournalist, right? Uh, well, yeah. she's a photojournalist now. Uh, then she was going to Nanking University and the daughter of a, a diplomat. You uh, met her there? 
I met her. Yes. What a romantic. Yeah. You were lucky that you got to I, China. That's the I best thing that came out of China. Huh? I proposed to her on top of Purple Mountain. <laughs> All right. King. Good for you. That's great. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Audrey and I took off uh -huh. for, um, for Saigon. Mm -hmm. And when we got there, of course, there were no reporters around. There were about a dozen uh, uh, Americans resident there. And mm -hmm. we had a rather, uh, what shall I say, a rather explosive arrival. Uh, because we arrived in, um, in Saigon, we checked into the famous Continental Hotel yeah. where Graham Greene and the others yeah. used to hang out. Yeah. And we were unpacking when mm. there was an enormous explosion. My Lord. And we rushed to a window and we looked out and there um, a cafe mm -hmm. uh, uh, had been blasted. Uh, a Ciclo driver had thrown a, a bomb. Mm -hmm. uh, there were dead and wounded um, French soldiers and Just sailors all eyesight. around. Just within eyesight, you can see it out your window? Right out the window. I'll be done. And uh, that, was, to that Saigon, was our introduction huh? yeah. to the French Indochina yeah. War. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so from that point, it was hotting it up. And uh, so instead of staying a month, the AP originally had that idea. Uh, Audrey and I stayed two years. Two years that war. in Saigon and in, in Vietnam. Uh, yeah, yeah, Vietnam, based in Saigon, but I cover the whole length of, uh, of uh, Vietnam, uh, mm -hmm. all the way up to Hanoi and up mm. to the China border where I travel with the French Foreign Legion. You were there before, it seems to me, if I may, you were there before anybody else. I mean, Hirsch before, or, before or, a lot or, of, or... Before correspondence. Before right. correspondence, yeah. was there any number or yeah. it was coming? And uh, did you have a sense of what was coming or did you... Did, and you write about that because you talk about the whole context after Mr. Roosevelt passed and the Truman decision and the French and that sort of thing. You write so well on that. It's so important to understand in terms of trying to understand that tragic uh, event, the Vietnam War, that there was a, a moment when it might have gone differently and so forth. And you had uh, that in your mind as you were there at that early stage and so forth? Or maybe you could address that. Yeah. Uh, how did we get into Vietnam? What was behind it? What were the geopolitics and the change between Mr. Roosevelt and Mr. Truman at that crucial time? And Maybe you could address some of those things, because I know you've written very well on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, most historians uh, uh, write about, uh, really about the Kennedy years, mm -hmm. uh, when uh, uh, President Kennedy began the, uh, the buildup uh, of troops mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, into, uh, in, into China. Uh, eventually, it reached a number of about a half a million mm -hmm. uh, troops. Uh, but the Vietnamese, uh, uh, and I've just been to Vietnam just, yes, back, you've just, re just yes, several uh, weeks ago, uh -huh, mm -hmm. uh, they think back more to uh, the, the Truman uh, presidency as the origin of the American involvement uh, in Vietnam. And, uh, and that's what this uh, uh, book uh, is, uh, is really uh, uh, all about. Right, right. It's a fiction thing. And, and, and uh, they think of it that they were on a track with the thinking as it could be understood by Mr. Roosevelt, and it changed? Yeah. Under Truman? Yeah, that's under, right. Yeah. Uh, and that's a crucial thing for us to try and understand that I juncture. Think it's, yeah. I think it's uh, very important because it shows how we, we slipped into uh, Vietnam. Eventually it cost us 58,000 dead. Yes. Uh, numerous uh, wounded and a lot of um, uh, suffering. Uh, Not to mention. There was also a war in which four million Vietnamese were killed civilian and military. That's staggering. Yeah, Four uh, million. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, uh, but uh, uh -huh. to get yeah. back to yes. what your, uh, yeah. your question, Harold, mm -hmm. what happened was mm -hmm. that in 1945, mm -hmm. um, the uh, Truman was trying to make up his mind whether or not he should uh, follow the uh, original proposal of President Roosevelt who died in April of that year That's right. to uh, transform uh, Indochina into a UN trusteeship. Was that the course that was taken with the former colonial, European colonial entities around the world as they could, for with the, the British, the Raj, they left yeah. the India oh, was not, coming? Not yet, that no. came much later. Yeah, yeah. And that relates very much to what happened in Indochina. But there was a general retreat back to Europe of these colonial powers that had been there. The French had been in French Indochina and the, the trusteeship council, or the trusteeship status was the status by which they could move toward independence for co former colonial Well, not as early as what? 1945, okay. and of course that, yeah, was, right. that was the big issue yes. at, at, uh -huh. at that time. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, uh, uh, even uh, Churchill at that time was uh, resisting independence for Indochina because he thought it would set 
an example for the dismantling of the British Empire. Yeah. But Harold, to get back to uh, what happened yes, then, uh, was that um, Truman was trying to make up his mind mm -hmm. whether or not to follow uh, Roosevelt's concept mm -hmm. of, of, of transforming Indochina into a trusteeship or yield to de Gaulle. Mm -hmm. uh, Charles de Gaulle, the French leader, was mm -hmm. pressuring him uh, to uh, support the return of the French to mm -hmm. Indochina as the yeah. price of his cooperation in Europe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. finally, um, uh, what happened was uh, that uh, Truman buckled under that pressure. And was Churchill supporting Mr. Gaul in there? Yes, he was. Uh, to, to for the reasons that own? I just yeah, right. uh, oh, mentioned, yeah. really. And would that have applied to Algeria as well? The French had to do to well, Algeria. Well, uh, that that became gone later. Uh, that became a French head later so, on. It was so ho yeah. a horror, Algeria. That, yeah, that, as well. That that came uh, uh, later on. Right. Uh, but as a consequence yes. of that decision mm -hmm. of uh, of Truman to assist the French. Yes we began to assist the French and then we began the gradual uh, involvement uh, in, uh, uh, in, in in Vietnam in Indochina which led eventually to a Vietnam War yeah and you had but that's that's where it all began yeah right that was and that was at a crucial juncture and so forth yeah. that was there and I don't think we well enough understand and that was going to lead to Dien Bien Phu I guess yeah. in 54 well, but the, of course yeah. The, yeah. the the tragic thing yes. about it and, and this is what this book is yes, mostly indeed. About, yeah. about is that at this moment mm -hmm. when Truman was trying to make up his mind uh, OSS agents yes. uh, from the Office of Strategic Services yes. Our American agents were actually with Ho Chi Minh, the wow. leader of the Viet Minh. Didn't, yeah. uh, they were in his jungle camp. Uh -huh. uh, they were saved training his, his life, didn't they? They, they were, yeah. They yeah. Were, well, they were training his cadre, yeah. arming his uh, uh, arming his his, his uh, cadre. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you say, one of them, uh, a medic, uh, saved Ho Chi Minh's life. Mm -hmm. uh, he was dying of uh, of dysentery mm -hmm. and malaria. And, and uh, a medic, uh, uh, Paul Hoagland, uh, injected him with uh, quinine, quinine and sulfur drugs mm -hmm. and saved his life. So here we were, uh, Truman deciding to go with the, uh, with the French, French, but at the same time, our agents were, were working with uh, Ho Chi Minh. What was behind the thinking of that? Working with Ho Chi Minh, was yeah. it against well, the Chinese? Uh, or? Well, he was mm -hmm. working with... Um, Working with uh, Ho Chi Minh because it was the last days of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the Second World War. The mm. Japanese were yeah. in occupation uh -huh. of uh, of yeah. Indochina, mm -hmm. uh, and Ho Chi Minh was supplying uh, important intelligence information to us for taking action against uh, the Japanese. They mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. carrying out guerrilla raids. Mm -hmm. They were providing. Um, uh, information for Chennault's famous flying yeah, tigers, yeah. B bombing yeah. right. targets mm -hmm. uh, against the Japanese, mm -hmm. uh, doing all of that. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, the OSS was conveying uh, Ho Chi Minh's appeals to Truman uh, for uh, recognition of uh, Indochinese uh, independence, the independence of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a matter as of fact, as a nationalist proposition. Uh, exactly. Um, uh, Ho Chi Minh yeah. directed eight appeals right. to Truman mm -hmm. uh, asking for uh, support of independence, economic cooperation with the United States, and, and independence based on the model of the Philippines, mm -hmm. the way we granted uh, mm -hmm. independence yes. uh -huh. to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And uh, Was he Tr Truman never yeah. answered any of those uh, messages. That was a thing he could have taken that direction and so forth. And was Ho Chi Minh identified with uh, communism? Yes, Ho Chi Minh, and, yeah. And uh, how does that, if it was a nationalist movement against the communists, and we had this George Kennan's containment being, uh, you know, the domino and so forth was informing things around that time. But the decision to back the French and so forth was a, dis you, in your view, it seems in mine, it was a disastrous way for us to go and not recognize the nationalist nature of the Viet Cong or the you know the Ho Chi Minh activity or yeah well it's how do we yeah, read well it's very important yeah, to uh, it is important to have very. some understanding and you uh, were on the ground on yeah. the spot yeah it was uh, some uh, very important to understand uh, the background as far as Ho Chi Minh is concerned and uh -huh. it goes back to mm -hmm. 1912 in 1912 uh -huh. at the Versailles conference mm -hmm. 
there was a little man in the morning coat going around, knocking on doors, particularly that of President Wilson, mm -hmm. uh, pleading for recognition of uh, of the independence of Indochina. Mm. And, and that man, that little man, mm. with Ho Chi Minh. Yes. And he was ignored. Uh, Wilson never received him. Mm. And Ho Chi Minh, when he was rebuffed by the West, he turned to the international communist movement. Mm -hmm. And he became a communist working in the international communist uh, movement. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we find him in 1945, uh, he is still a communist, mm -hmm. uh, but he says he is first a, a, a nationalist, mm -hmm. uh, and he was entirely willing to uh, uh, accept the uh, uh, transformation of, uh, of uh, Indochina uh, into uh, a democratic uh, 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 country. Mm -hmm. uh, he offered, for example, in a message sent uh, through the OSS, uh, to enter into the French Free Union, mm -hmm. uh, to accept a French president for five to ten years, and the only thing that he asked in return was that eventually he will grant us independence, and the French turned him down. Uh, it seems fair enough. Of a, it seems yeah. to me like a pretty fair offer on the whole. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and so the, the French and the administration of Mr. Truman turned that. That's down. right. And, uh, and, and what happened there the after, you yeah. say, uh, uh -huh. was that when we began to give military assistance yes. uh, to, to the French. Uh, before uh, Bien Bien Phu. Befo before Dien Bien Phu, and, uh, uh, and then uh, Ho Chi Minh was opposing the return of French troops. Sure. Uh, He's a nationalist. The, the, yeah, the yeah. only thing At he could do was, yeah. he t it yeah. was that point he turned yeah. to the Chinese communists and, and the Russians for help. All right, yeah. Uh, and that was the makings of uh, this terrible situation in which we eventually found ourselves in uh, the Vietnam War. Well, oh, that was a, a thing. And you remember Mr. McCarthy, and you remember George Kennan's containment, and you had the Soviet Union controlling the heartland, and then China fell. It was like a big red amoeba coming out from the Eurasian landmass, and we had this idea that if they're going to expand, we had Korea. And we had that, and we had that. Was that informing our opinion to where we could not adequately identify that Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam was a nationalist proposition and that it wasn't to be associated with the spread of communism that was so informing public opinion and even our officials and so forth? Yeah, that, that are there was, any lessons yeah, to that be learned? Was, yeah, well, that was at the core of, uh, of, of American policy. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, by 1950, when uh, uh, having been uh, turned down by, uh, by Truman, um, Ho Chi Minh was very much aligned with the Chinese communists uh, and with the, with the Russians. And at that period of time, mm -hmm. uh, there was Soviet expansionism sure. in Europe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, China had yeah. fallen to the communists. Yeah. They were in control of the mainland the con in yeah. June of 1950. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, North Koreans invaded the, the South. That's right. That's right. And so at that point, um, uh, the United States felt, and a lot of people in this country felt, uh, that, um, that here, the, here there was a communist tide moving uh, oh, in, in Asia. From the heartland. Yeah. And therefore, oh. uh, the, there was Had the build-up. Had to build be contained. Up, huh? there was, yeah, there yeah. was the build-up for resistance uh, to uh, Ho Chi Minh's uh, people. But the point is, and yeah. that's the point yes. of that yes, book, sir. Yes, sir. if the, if things had been worked out differently yeah. and Roosevelt's idea had been followed, yes. none of that would have happened, yeah. uh, at oh. least as far as uh, Vietnam and Indochina is yeah. concerned. And the Vietnam and Indochina has been, uh, uh, it, it just really is something uh, that is just fantastic. Uh, we say it lightly, but four million, an awful lot of folk, and That's we had right. napalm and yeah. things that we did, and we got all, and it, it, and it, it really put a heavy dent in the conscience of this country and so forth. Those scenes of the people leaving from the helicopter as we had to leave, having lost a war and so forth. And April the 30th, 1945. Uh, clinging, on to the, 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 clinging on to the helicopter, getting away from some of that, and that was a, 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 a very you know, demoralizing defeat for us and so forth. And it, it, it's, a big, uh, it's a big issue that still thinks it, or informs a lot of people's thinking about things now. A lot of people are trying to get over the Vietnam syndrome. They're trying to say that, what is your overall assessment of that? You've had a long perspective on it. Um, there are people who will say that the Vietnam incursion on our part and so forth, the loss of life, 
it was terrible and so forth, but it had to be done in order to protect some greater interest or something like that. Um, what no. is your thought about yeah. that? Is it an unmitigated disaster and miscalculation on our part? Mr. McNamara will say in the fog of war we made a mistake. Uh, what is your overall assessment of that well, vis-a-vis the yeah, national consciousness? Uh, my overall assessment, uh, I think you have to look at the whole Vietnam experience. Yes. Uh, first of all, I want to say before anything else. Yes, please. Uh, that our, our soldiers who fought in Vietnam mm -hmm. did so heroically. Uh -huh. uh, 58,000 of them died. 1,500 of them are still uh, missing. Their remains not found. Yeah. Tremendous suffering uh, as a consequence of that. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they are, in my view, they are heroes. Yes. Okay. But from a political point of yes, view, indeed. what plunged our people and our soldiers mm -hmm. uh, into this and our quagmire nation. And our nation. was a serious mistake. It was a mistake. And I think that McNamara, the, who had a role in it, admits to that, that this day as well. He does. Yes. But um, that is, a, there's no, um, there's no answering for that mistake. I mean, there's been no, there, I guess it's always been throughout history that if you're powerful, you make a mistake and you result in some, uh, is it on our conscience or were there other forces or is there some mitigating experience on that other than us to take well, in our, in our conscience, you, you know, that you we know, were yeah. responsible, our leadership was responsible for four million people killed. And shouldn't there be some answer of ability or some answer or some justice or something or some sort of, uh, they, have, they have truth and reconciliation things against the things in apartheid and the Nazis have reconciliation about what they did and that sort of thing. Should there be something on that part? But there are a lot of people in this country who want to say, well, it was part of a larger issue and that we are the force of light and good and that sort of thing. They don't want to address that. Or is there something you think we should address or uh, face up to our responsibility for having been responsible for that? Or can you in some way give me something so that I don't have to feel that way about my nation? Well, I think uh, a mistake uh, uh, was made as far as uh, Vietnam is concerned. Uh, and I think uh, there's pretty much of a a, a consensus uh, uh, about that mm -hmm. uh, among uh, among historians, mm -hmm. at least it's historians that certainly that uh, uh, I think are, are, are most uh, notable. Uh, where we get mixed up is yes. um, uh, is that uh, it, it should not in any way reflect on on, on the heroism and the of contribution the of the troops. Oh no 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 not I at mean, all. I mean they were yeah, an right. instrumentality oh, yeah, of, a, of a, a, a political decision. Yes, that's right. The best way I can really answer that question mm -hmm. is. Um, you know, I've just been to uh, uh, to Vietnam, and yeah. at this time, April 30th was the, uh, was the 30th anniversary of the end of the war there, and so there was attention given to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, the whole spirit of the Vietnamese now is for reconciliation mm -hmm. and putting the past aside. Uh, mistakes were made. There were also terrible mistakes made, uh, uh, On their side. cruel mistakes by, by the Vietnamese. Yes, right. Treatment yeah. of our POWs, mm -hmm. um, the uh, treatment given over uh, uh, almost uh, a million uh, uh, non-communist Vietnamese mm -hmm. after Ho, Ho Chi Minh uh, mm -hmm. uh, took, um, uh, took control uh, on all sides. Mm -hmm. But today, uh, the, the, the Vietnamese um, uh, welcome uh, Americans, and uh, we have very good relations with them. We are today uh, their biggest uh, export market. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, our uh, uh, naval vessels calling on their uh, uh, ports. Mm -hmm. uh, we have American non-governmental organizations working all over the country on things like the after effects of Agent Orange, yeah, yeah. digging up the, the, the mines left uh, uh, behind, uh, you have a quarter of a million uh, American tourists going there. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, ev ev every year, uh, and uh, there's a whole spirit of uh, of uh, forgiveness and uh, reconciliation, and Americans are very popular uh, now. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, while I was there, mm -hmm. I asked a question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
to some of the uh, war veterans there and so on. Uh, you know, you have a, I said to him, you have a, a different attitude towards the French. You mm -hmm. don't, here, here, you know, w we just bombed you uh, at terrific Remember cost. Napalm? And uh, why, why are you still so much more friendly to us than the French? They didn't uh, think of us as occupiers? Or? They did think of us as occupiers, but uh, I put that question to oh, them. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, and the, the answer was, uh, you came to us, McNamara and others, mm -hmm. American w war veterans, and you apologized. The French never apologized for what they did in 80 years of colonialism. Hmm. So, you know, there's some things, there's some situations and tragedies that occur that there's no sort of sorting out or explanation uh, for. Uh, and the, the, what, what I think of, as far as the Vietnam War is concerned, is really summed up uh, in, in the attitude now of uh, the Vietnamese and, and a lot of American uh, uh, war veterans who are visiting Vietnam and Indochina, uh, a spirit of reconciliation and try to build a better future. Uh, very interesting what you said. Uh, what did the form take of our, the Chinese have just had recently a great deal of the, you noted the Japanese treatment during the Second World War, huge demonstrations, Iris Chang's book and so forth, against the rape of Nanking and, the, and that sort of thing. And then the Chinese government, the Japanese government just made a statement about how, okay, we'll take responsibility at an official level, not just somebody as a tourist or something like that. Where have, uh, who, 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 what government representative of the United States of America has made sufficient apology, if that's the right term, for a mistake that we made, and we've admitted that we made a mistake? Who's done that? Where was it done? What's the documentation for that? Yeah. Which presidential person went there and made a formal declaration of that degree or something? Because I've not seen it. And then the French also, they did not apologize for anything. And then you also had the French, the colonial powers in Ara uh, Algeria, yeah, where they well, did not. And uh, well, apart first from the question, yeah, who's okay, apologized uh, it, sufficiently, uh, well, and the there most, are people who the say most, there's no reason for us yeah, to apologize. Well, the most notable thing was when President Clinton mm -hmm. went to Hanoi mm -hmm. in 1995. Thank you. Uh, and uh, stood before the, 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 the Vietnamese people there. Uh, uh, and uh, talked about the great mistakes that were made at that, that period of time. It was, in effect, uh, an apology. And let me tell you a story about, yes, uh, about the reaction to, uh, to, to Clinton mm -hmm. when he came there and made that declaration. Uh, just before Clinton went there, uh, the, uh, uh, we, we had uh, uh, there uh, a visit by Castro. Mm -hmm. And to get people out to cheer, yeah. the government sent trucks out into the countryside. Round up people. Uh -huh. To bring in people to cheer. Yeah. Uh -huh. When Clinton came there. You didn't have to do that. There were thousands and thousands of people who have, uh, had, came out uh, to cheer for him uh, as a representative of the American people. Uh, and, uh, and they were not, uh, there was very little attention in the official press given to his, uh, his visit. I mean, it's still, a, it's still a communist there. It's still yeah, a communist-controlled yeah. press. Yes. Uh, and uh, but uh, that was that's sort of an expression of the attitude today uh, of um, uh, of the Vietnamese. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you lived there for two years in the early part. Well, and then uh, oh, I I had almost with the two years with the French, and then oh, yeah. uh, the better part of three years uh, when I was chief correspondent of the New York Times for yes. Southeast Asia, right, almost right. Two, uh, about two of those three years were uh, uh, spent uh, uh, in, in Indochina. Uh, one thing about the attitudes of, uh, of uh, my wife's a yes. photojournalist. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there was one day when she uh, took off uh, on a pedicab mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she went out to, to take photographs. Yes. Uh, and the pedicab man asked her where she was from, and mm. she said, well, I'm from New York. Mm. And so as the pedicab man went through the streets, mm -hmm. he kept shouting, 
New York, New York. <laughs> <laughs> and all the people shouted and clapped and everything Isn't else. And uh, it you know? was a spontaneous sort of uh, reaction. Isn't that something? Uh, and uh, when you consider, you know, when you go travel, as I did this yes. time, yes. Uh, all How long over were you Vietnam. This last time? I How long went. Were you? How long were you in Vietnam this, this last time? Only, um, only a couple of weeks. All but right, I right, traveled yeah. north and south and right. into the countryside yeah. and so on. And you see... A sentimental journey? That's right. Yeah. It's a, a haunting journey. Yeah, a haunting yeah. sentimental journey. Yeah. And you see mm -hmm. the cemeteries mm -hmm. with all of the mm -hmm. memorials uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the most tragic things for the Vietnamese is something that has to be explained that's very strange uh, mm -hmm. and, and very different. They you know, we mourned and still do today mm -hmm. our missing in, uh, uh, in, in Vietnam. We Absolutely. have 1,500 uh, Unaccountable? Of service people yeah. whose r remains were never found. Yeah. Uh, uh, missing in action, is that taken care this, of now? That's I mean, right. have we got pretty in much combat. accounting for that? We don't have people that are still in a oh, tiger no. cage somewhere oh, or no. something. You know, oh, like no. Mr. No. Perot was on uh, about no, that the, for a while. The, uh, the Vietnamese have been very cooperative yeah. uh, in that respect in wow. trying to find the remains of soldiers and so on. Mm -hmm. But we have 1,500. Yeah. The Vietnamese have 900,000 missing go. soldiers. There you go. 900,000. Yeah, right, 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 right. But what makes it, gives it uh, added poignancy is, is, is this, uh, and, and a hardship for uh, the Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. In their religion, mm -hmm. uh, which is sort of a combination of ancestor worship and Buddhism and cow diaism mm -hmm. uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, the custom is uh, that um, uh, when you uh, lose a relative, mm -hmm. uh, you uh, have to attend to uh, the burial uh, with special rites. Mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the Buddhist cu custom, after uh, three years, mm -hmm. you uh, exhume the remains and rebury them. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that, you, uh, it is considered that the, the lost ones are wandering souls. Good Lord. Wandering yeah. souls. And this is heartfeltly held, That's felt right. by them. So yeah. wow. with 300,000 missing uh, mm -hmm. Vietnamese, mm -hmm. you know, it is a... 300 or 900,000? Uh, sorry, yes, 900,000, yes, 900,000 uh, missing. Staggering, that's nearly a million people, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, uh, uh, it that's is on a, top a of the tragedy. 400 confirmed, is that a confirmed figure, 400 that were perished, or Vietnamese or Southeast Asians that perished in that incursion, that uh, it, the, conflagration? The, the, the best estimate is 3.8 uh, million. That's an awful lot of yeah. human beings, yeah. isn't it? You know? That's right. And I'm not sure if it's enough. And I mean, have we in our soul, the United States of America, done? It's one thing for the people who were defeated to be able to say, uh, and, and the United States of America is an absolutely wonderful country and so forth. But I don't know if we've adequately. Uh, okay, uh, I'm glad Mr. Clinton went and so forth. But there's still many forces in this country who want to say. Well, we can do no wrong. We are the tide of history. We can do no wrong. We didn't do wrong then. They shouldn't have, you know, that sort of thing. I don't think that on our part, the strong side, there's not been adequate enough, uh, I don't know, humility or whatever the term is, uh, chagrin for having made a mistake because we want to think we don't make mistakes. I, I, I don't know. Well, there's certain arrogance. Do you understand what yeah. I, yeah, arrogance. I guess that was an well, arrogance. Well, you know, when power. you talk to the Vietnamese, they they talk about uh, uh, American arrogance in Iraq. Well, and, that's uh, one of the reasons it might be worth talking about because we're now engaged in a, an incursion in Iraq, and we had uh, that is uh, just you know the, incur the 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 insurrection is co going strong still, and one of the things I noted in some of your writings is that there was a there was a, a strong animosity on the part of people around the world being occupied by colonial powers. That's been part of the zeitgeist and the time we've been in and the retreat from that. And I think a lot of the world views what we're doing in Iraq as no matter how much we want to put a, you know, a nice patina on it and so forth, that it is an occupation by a Western power in the, in the colonial pattern, not just the neo-colonial pattern of financial manipulation and so forth, but in actual terms and that they take exception strongly to that coming out of a historical experience, one part of which is Vietnam. 
correct? Or I is think, there comparisons I, I to be made yeah. or contrast and how, well, you how see, do we see that? We have a lot of uh, uh, political um, considerations and ideas as to why we went in Iraq. Uh, but for the Vietnamese, mm -hmm. what it boils down to, uh, what, for example, a, a member of the uh, National Assembly uh, in Vietnam said, uh, quoting a lot of uh, Vietnamese war veterans and mm -hmm. saying, and it was, uh, there they go again. Yeah, right. A, a big power invading a small country. Looks that way. So that's the way, and they talk about, you know, our own experience, mm -hmm. uh, not, uh, not only with the United States, but a thousand years with the Chinese. Chinese, and, and then, then the French. Eighty, already, 80 years then, with the yeah. French. Oh. Uh, and, uh, and then the Americans. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so their attitude is uh, they can see no justification for a big power invading a small country. That's basically their attitude. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And that would be the strong dictating to the weak, which I guess has been the case throughout all of human history. We had the emperors of Rome and the serfs pretty much did what they were told. Louis the Sixteenth, the serfs did what they were told. There were a few people, a few plutocratic people who ran everything. And it's been like that throughout almost all of history, isn't it? Hasn't it been? And so they see that as a continuation of it, that the United States does not have a liberating vision. Or do we have a liberating vision? Do we have an idea, a geopolitical notion? What is the geopolitical strategy behind what informs our Iraqi policy, or our Middle Eastern policy? We had George Kennan in containment that we were all in a certain sense in accord with geostrategically and geopolitically. What is it that's motivating us uh, now in the United States or let's say the leaders of the world in terms of a geostrategy or is it a geostrategic thinking? And um, I, I don't know. We had that, that notion that uh, containment, now the Soviet Union has fallen and so forth. What is your thinking on that? Do we have a vision that is adequate to the future or allow or is able to allow us to allow, to have the liberating capability the future may be offering if we would find the right course to it or something or what are your thoughts on that uh, well if the, you can understand what I'm yeah, saying well you know speaking of, about containment of the Soviet Union before mm -hmm. the um, invasion of Iraq there was a, a great uh, uh, debate um, with most of the experts on the Middle East mm -hmm. uh, the Arabists and the State Department and others uh, believing here we had uh, contained uh, the Soviet Union with its enormous nuclear uh, power. There's no reason why we can't contain Saddam Hussein, even if he has these weapons of mass destruction. Uh, and uh, President Bush didn't buy that. He felt that uh, he, he was convinced that there were weapons of mass destruction and so that he was going to go in after Saddam Hussein uh, regardless of what the Iraqi people thought about uh, a foreign invasion. Think he manipulated uh, the intelligence on an uh, ideological Well, that's, uh, that's uh, I, I, I don't, I don't uh, personally believe that the president uh, did, but I, uh -huh. I, I, I do think that the people around him hmm. uh, manipulated uh, the intelligence because there were many people in the intelligence who were saying uh, there was actually uh, no, uh, no, no proof. Mm -hmm. As it turned out, there were no weapons was of no. mass uh, And what is informing them? What is informing them in terms of a view of the world and so forth? As Mr. Kennan gave us after the Second World War, this seemed to be, what's informing it? I mean, uh, what, what is their thinking in terms of this? Is it, uh, that's what I'm trying to get at. What, what has succeeded containment as a basic thinking for geopolitical arrangement? of the world. Well, I and think uh, we've, moved we? we've moved away from uh, the concept of uh, containment, which was, um, which was carried through, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, right through the Reagan period. That's yeah. what um, uh, President Reagan essentially did. Um, uh, he kept pressure to bear on the Soviet Union and, mm -hmm. and, and contained them until they collapsed from mm -hmm. within. From within. And yeah. there's, there's a lot of, there was a lot of evidence uh, once that um, uh, the United States went into Iraq mm -hmm. uh, that the Saddam Hussein regime, mm -hmm. in spite of all its security forces, uh, was uh, for economic, social, and political reasons, was very weak and there was a possibility of internal collapse or uh, revolt 
uh, but that, and, and that, that, that intelligence or that impression uh, came, uh, you know, uh, uh, too late. But we've moved away uh, uh, from the whole idea of, uh, of containment to what the Bush administration's idea of preemption, that mm -hmm. we have the right uh, if we uh, perceive mm -hmm. some kind of a danger somewhere, yeah. uh -huh. Uh, not to just contain, but to strike them with our Perth. military force. Uh -huh. And that's what we did in Iraq. And that's what, in a very subtle sort of way, we sometimes have threatened uh, uh, Iran and, um, uh, Syria, and North Korea. North Korea, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it seems to me it could be dangerous in the sense, I mean, uh, you're going to have Pakistan and India seeing very real danger, existential challenge that has to be done. Uh, that sort of thing seems to me, if I may, it seems to me like a dangerous precedent to set. For, I don't know how it, you know, well, without some. Uh, I th yeah, well, hopefully I think we'll uh, move away from that uh, and back to uh, the policy which uh, uh, President uh, Reagan and, 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 um, and Clinton followed, which is uh, a policy not of a unilateral uh, uh, action. Uh, and preemption, uh, military strikes, and all, and all the rest, uh, but co uh, c collaboration with our allies and joining with them where there's a danger in containing, uh, hopefully in a peaceful way through sanctions and other means, uh, some uh, a danger to uh, interna international stability. Uh -huh. I would hope that we move uh, uh, back uh, to that direction, and I think we're, to some extent, we've had a bloody nose in, in Iraq up to this point. Seems uh, that way, and, and it, could, uh, it could very easily get worse on and, a large and, scale. And, and maybe, yeah. uh, you know, you, you now find our military saying, well, do we have enough forces if we have an emergency, uh, you know, in uh, Korea or, right. or elsewhere? Spread pretty thin, I think. I so think. we're overextended. Seems that way to me, too, yeah. if I may. It seems yeah. that way. And, so, and, the, and then the, the question is, what, what, what's behind them? I, you can remember early on in Vietnam, we had year after year after year, the light is at the end of the tunnel. We're going to just send a few more divisions, and so we're going to win because the force of history is with us, and we didn't. And I don't quite understand what the force of history that they seem to be wanting to claim they're uh, exerting in the case of the Iraq thing. I didn't understand it in Vietnam either. I mean, you could see something with the containment thing, idea, that kind of thing, a rationale for it. But I don't know what their rationale is now in terms of the policy decisions that they're making. I'm a little bit confused. I think a number of people in much of the world is with the current administration, let's say, or even the thrust of the United States. You've been following international relations since yeah. your youth and so forth. What is your sense about things? Are you optimistic, pessimistic, to use an overworked cliche, but about the state of the world, and what do you see are some of the major challenges and maybe opportunities we could look for in order to try to make things more appropriate in terms of the well, future I, development I, I'm of rather, the planet? Well, uh, I'm rather uh, uh, pessimistic uh, about, I am too. Uh, about Iraq. Mm -hmm. and, um, now, first of all, mm -hmm. we, the Bush administration uh, had us go into Iraq mm -hmm. um, because of the danger of weapons of mass destruction. Well, there were no weapons of mass destruction. <clears throat> then the president shifted to the idea of, uh, of democracy. Yes, right. Establishment right. of democracy. Right, right. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, I, I do not believe uh, that um, even if we succeed, and I hope we do, yes. establish democracy uh, in, uh, uh, in, in Iraq, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that it necessarily means that that democratic idea or influence will spread, will spread to other countries. No. Uh, because uh, in terms of my experience, mm -hmm. each country, in, in terms of its culture, its history, mm -hmm. its, uh, its internal problems, uh, develops in its own way. It, it, doesn't, it is not that much influenced uh, by these by grand its schemes. Yeah, right. Okay. Or oh, by its neighbor. You yeah. see, that was a justification yeah. uh, uh, that uh, in, uh, in Vietnam of uh, continuing the war there, oh, yeah. the so called domino theory. Oh, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, in the dom according to the domino theory, that if, uh, if Vietnam became communist, mm -hmm. then there uh, goes then Thailand, the there goes Laos, all, there, the all whole of Southeast Asia, the dominoes would fall. Mm. Uh, 
but uh, by 1967, uh, 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 Richard Helms, the, uh, the head of the CIA, mm -hmm. was, uh, was telling, was telling um, uh, uh, LBJ uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, there was, that it was a fallacious idea, mm -hmm. that it, it would not happen, but mm -hmm. we continued on. And then finally, uh, when uh, the, uh, the uh, um, communists won in, uh, in, in Vietnam and there was an establishment of a communist Viet Vietnam, mm -hmm. it didn't have any influence on the other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And as a matter of fact, uh, until the, uh, 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 the, the communist Vietnam began to shed most of its communist shackles, mm -hmm. as it has now, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, it, was, it was isolated mm -hmm. rather than having a great influence on the rest of Southeast Asia. Yeah, so yeah. I don't believe in yeah. this idea that if you can establish some some kind of a, a beacon light in one country that mm -hmm. it's going to spread to the others. Mm -hmm. People go their own way in terms of their history, their culture, their attitudes, uh, and, and their problems. Yes, and we want to be able to be understanding of that diversity, maybe even celebrate the diversity that there is in the human culture, rather than trying to put it all into one basket in a certain sense, which it, it makes me a little bit uh, nervous about the current state of affairs. I agree with you in Iraq and other, thing, other things, and I don't quite understand what's behind the thinking. I, and I, I fear a kind of arrogance of power that is going to be, I remember from the Vietnam days, and I thank you really for reporting all on, on that so well. And the, and the book is recommended. I wonder if you could. You've had a long career in, t in, 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 um, in journalism. You've always been interested in international journalism. I guess you continue with that. But maybe you could talk a little bit about your experience, because you were, you were uh, managing editor for a long time at the New York Times. Or could well, you share a little bit of your? Well, as far as my uh, foreign experience is concerned, mm -hmm. I sort of went up a la up, up a ladder. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I covered ch the China Civil War for thirty years, then Vietnam for two years, and uh, uh, and uh, then I, I I left the Associated Press to join the Times after service in Berlin. What year would that have been and you went out with the Times? Uh, in 1959. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, the, then the Times sent me to um, uh, Moscow for three mm -hmm. years where I covered the, uh, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis and the first space shots Wasn't and that so on. something? Do you remember that well? Where uh, were you when, the, when, the, when the, 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 the they were streaming? For I was scared out of my wits. Oh. <laughs> I guess you were you uh, were in Br Moscow at the time. Oh yes. Of the Cuban oh, thing. Oh yes, I covered that whole uh, nuclear crisis. That was yeah, just and, uh, really hair you raising. You think uh, the Americans were uh, scared? You should have been there with the Russians. They were really? petrified. They thought the missiles were going to rain down. I'm not talking so much about the general population yeah. because uh, they were not the really aware of it yeah, because right. of the. The, the Soviet control where's the of the leaders? information. Where's the leaders? We're yeah, all concerned. But I can yeah, tell yeah. you, uh -huh. I can tell you uh, the uh, one little story uh, yeah. uh, about that to illustrate it, uh, and that is that the the very day mm -hmm. that an agreement was reached between the Soviet leader Khrushchev mm -hmm. uh, and and Kennedy was the anniversary of the Great October Revolution, and there was a party in the Kremlin. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was invited, and I walked into the crystal room. Did you know the agreement had been made when you walked oh, yes. in the room? Yes. Everyone knew. Yes, it. everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Must have been a it. sigh of relief. Really? Well, in well, the, in the room, yeah, there were Russian uh, diplomats, mm. newspaper people, and so on. And there was Khrushchev mm. standing with his Politburo uh, grimly on yeah. one end uh, of the uh, 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 of the room. Mm. But I can't tell you the, the sense of relief among oh. the Russians oh. that agreement had been reached. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, one uh, prominent uh, Russian journalist saying to me, you know, I thought uh, at any moment that missiles would be, be crashing down on us. Yeah. And they were so grateful that the crisis was over. Well, yes, so was all of humanity. That's right. Yeah. You know, I tell you, when I would leave uh, our little apartment yeah. where uh, in, was, Moscow, uh, huh? yeah, yeah. in Moscow, yeah, in Moscow, yeah, uh, with uh, uh, my, my two children at that mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and I'd look at them there uh, sleeping. I uh -huh. to go down to the cable office to file, and you yeah. did most of your writing because of Soviet censorship at the cable office at night. I see. Uh -huh. uh, I would um, 
I would uh, wonder about their security and whether or not an American missile might be coming in. You have grandchildren now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, it focuses the mind, don't you think, in terms of some of these larger issues? I got four now. <laughs> and I, I was just going to talk over uh, Mr. Tovey, so we're going to have to do it later. But these missile, these weapon systems have developed such a horrendous capability now, apparently they can destroy the species. Apparently, yeah, this uh, is what Mr. Uh, Kaku and some others tell us. Uh, I believe uh, it's a staggeringly could, significant yeah. and, and delicate time that we're in right now, and it calls for really s statesmanship and vision. And I, I wish we had more of it than I can perceive in our political leadership. Now, I don't, I don't want you to have to comment on that, but I'm just stating. Well, I think I, I'm that, looking I for think some that's uh, our greatest need all over the world, and in, in, intelligent. Uh, uh, leadership and uh, for one reason or other you look at many countries around the world and you wonder about you see these dictators and these corrupt people and and others who are you know who manage to bamboozle their peoples into um, accepting uh, their uh, their domination yeah. uh, but that I think you've hit it Harold I think the most important thing for us now to lead us out out of the darkness into the light mm. is good leadership in this yeah. country and uh, and elsewhere. Well, if we're going to get it, we can. Go, if we want to begin to get some good, r historically well based and thought out leadership, I think they could do no better than to repair to your work, if I may say so. And I'm sorry we run out of time for this particular moment. But well, thank you for coming in <laughs> very oh, much. Well, thank you for this and opportunity. Would, no, not really at all. Really your pleasure. It. And we'll try to do our little bit in public access if we can get the intellectual leadership to try to come up with something. But, and I thank you really very much for all your work and for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank and you. let's let them see what the book looks like. Again, you want to read the title for me, please? Oh, thanks. Uh, Fatal Crossroads, a novel of Vietnam, 1945. A very important <laughs> read thanks. for those of you who are trying to find that kind of vision like I am. And I thank you very much again. Thank you very much. Your pleasure to have the perception. See more topping? I'll, we only scratch the surface, of which we're only capable of doing. But I really appreciate all of your work, and thank you very much for coming in. I'm, I'm glad to be here. And we invite you to tune in. We'll come back again tomorrow. That's it for now. Uh, once again, one last time, thank you very, very much <laughs> indeed. We just scratched the surface. We ought to try and get something. You're, at, you're with the Council on Foreign Relations, I guess, and you're still in touch with a lot of people. Oh, yes. Maybe yeah. there could be some things done where there could be. Did you, were you familiar with Bucky Fuller or McLuhan or some of the intellectuals? Yes. And that sort of thing. Maybe there could be something done in, in the media where these ideas could be tossed around. Because it's hard for people in a position of responsibility for an institutional structure to talk about things in maybe a new way because they have that. Maybe in television, these things could be talked about more or something come up with. But I think I think you know, you know what I'm saying. I, I, I think programs like this, public access, where there's you know unstructured, free discussion yeah, and yeah. so on. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of the problems that we've been plunged into have been because the, the, the people have not been fully informed, mm -hmm. either because of the media or the government and so on. Mm -hmm. Certainly that was true of mm -hmm. the way we went into Iraq. Yeah. Certainly it was true the way we went into Vietnam. Right. We want to have more. And if we make a couple of errors because we're ignorant, because we don't understand, it might be okay. We, but if we do it here... It's like a virtual thing. We don't, we don't have the responsibility that the people in the State Department have. We respect that. But at the same time, someplace, some, some new idea.